Okay, so recently Turbo had this massive update where they added tons of extensions. It was actually a couple months ago. Um, but it made Turbo Warp slash Scratch a genuine way of making games. There's tons of things with Scratch that are just absolutely wrong. Or not wrong, but just very inefficient for making games. And if you want to make anything really big, like multiplayer overhead shooting games, or really any game that's not stuck to like a tiny screen or whatever, it's really... It's, it's difficult to make in Scratch. And Turbo Warp had this massive update where they released a bunch of extensions to make this 10 times easier. And one of these updates or extensions was actually the extension for CloudLink. CloudLink allows you to do networking and allows us to send data over servers, ultimately allowing us to do multiplayer. This is absolutely amazing and removes so much stuff. And I'm on, even allows us to be able to send text so we don't have to be converting it over which is a pain in the butt. So by the end of this tutorial, you should have a scene or screen like this where you can actually enter in on this first client here some text or data you want to send to the other thing. And if you look at this data variable, it'll actually update when we type it in. So example, if I type subscribe, we'll see over here on this second person, it updates the data and I can type this in and it type like hello and it'll update on both clients which means we can send positional data we can send bullet data we can basically send everything so we can make multiplayer game but just to get started we're gonna make this simple demo scene here so we can send data between two clients connect to a server and actually have a demo server to be using for our game okay so how do we actually start doing this first things first you actually need to be um in turbo warp if you're not uh if you don't have turbo warp it's actually pretty easy just either search it in your browser or um, you can just use it from there or you can download it I personally have it downloaded it's kind of nice just to be able to click it and not have to use Wi-Fi or anything um, but yeah okay so first things first once you have turbo warp installed we need to actually add cloud link to our project I already have it added here as well as a few other extensions you don't need these but these are just me messing around um, but to add cloud link you must click this add extensions button and this menu pop up and it must like you know kind of looks like scratch once you start scrolling down you'll realize it has a lot more than scratch um but so you don't have to just scroll through this mass amount of extensions you can actually just search cloud link and this one right here looks like a cloud and has an l on it so just click that one hit okay and you'll see uh, it should be added to your project now i have it already added as well as some other ones but you don't need any of these except cloud link so yeah Okay, now first things first. Now it's not as simple as just like scratch. Just you can't just make a cloud variable and all of a sudden it works. Um, it that's one thing that is nice about Scratch's kind of default cloud stuff is it's super, it's super simple, but also means it's super hard to do anything slightly complex. It's just a challenge to send like X and Y position data through Scratch's cloud variables. Is part of the reason why it's hard. So it's not very easy to make massive multiplayer games um that's why this is great so there again with making stuff more expandable and all make more complex just come with a slight complexity to it which isn't even that hard of a complexity of this you just need to have a slight understanding of how this works basically we have servers um that's really the only thing you need to understand of this there's no like ports or anything if you ever done networking with i'm um, outside of like scratch so if you ever did python or Godot, Unity, whatever. There's no ports or anything. It's just servers. It's pretty simple. Now, obviously, most of us aren't going to have a server because it costs money to keep up. And, you know, most of us don't really have a reason to have servers unless you're making a game, obviously. Luckily, uh, CloudLink comes with some free servers and you can connect to them really easily. So you don't have to worry about that. But anyways, how do we actually do this? So first things first, I'm actually make a when green flag clicked here. So basically, once the game starts, we're going to actually want to connect to this server, and then we're also going to want to check if we connected or not. So when green flag clicked, we want to actually grab the connected server. Now, there's a lot of stuff here. If you're using Turbo Support, you can make yourself, um, you can make it 10 times easier for yourself by hitting Control Space, and then you can search for this stuff. So the node you're looking for is connect to server, and it should pop up. Now, it's also right here, so I'm just going to drag it in, and there we go. Now, um, there's a server list built into CloudLink, and you can actually see the server list right here by, gra by grabbing this uh, server list node thing here, and it'll show you a bunch of JSON, which is just a method of storing data. But it shows all this stuff here, and yeah, now you can just use this and break it down, but they have this connected server node that makes it really easy. 
basically they have like three or two servers um if you have your own server you want to do zero and do some other stuff i think but basically if you're on your um if you just want to use one of their servers you don't have to pay any money just type two or one i'm just gonna use it's two for now um now obviously there can be problems example if you have no wi-fi this could give us an error and we don't want to just start running our project like if we haven't connected to server um so we're actually on uh we'll run a wait we're gonna wait until we do connect so i'm gonna go wait until and i'm gonna grab this boolean block here which is wait until connected now this only checks if we're connected if we're not connected we'll just keep waiting forever so if there's an error there'll be problems we also need to check if we failed to connect so basically i'm going to grab a operator and i'm going to check both of these so i'm going to check if connected or failed to connect so we're going to wait until one of these are set to true hopefully it'll be connected but just in case it doesn't happen we just need to check this then i'm going to put an if block here um because this doesn't actually tell us which one this just tells okay you can keep it running now so what we actually need to do is check the boolean block here connected and again if you don't want to keep grabbing from this massive list of blocks you can just search connected um so yeah so if connected then we obviously worked and it connected so what i actually say for now is connected otherwise which means it failed to connect i'm going to say failed to connect and then just put a bunch of dots or whatever, make it look... Yeah, so basically this will tell us we failed to connect. So basically we connect to the server, we'll wait until we're either connected or it failed to connect. If it did connect, we'll tell it by saying say connected. If it didn't connect, then we'll say failed to connect. Pretty self-explanatory. And I'm also going to probably end the project in here just to make it safer. So we're going to stop all if we failed to connect. Just so the project doesn't keep running, thinking it's connected to the server when it's really not. And other problems. So that's literally it. That's everything connected or working. So if I run my project, um, it'll take some time to connect for the first time. Um, just keep waiting. And it should eventually say connect. It's just yeah. So wait for that connect. And as you see, it says connected. So we know we are now connected. Now each time you run your project, it'll be much easier. Um, so you don't have to keep waiting that long time for it to see if it'll work. So if I pause the game, run again, it'll automatically connect just because we've connected already. Now, as if your first time running and connecting to a server, it will say warning, like, hey, you're connecting to a server. Um, so just be warned, there is probably technically stuff that could happen kind of insecurely using a server like their server. Um, I would hope that Turbo Warp would add an extension that has a server that is faulty and would get you hacked or something and share, leak your IP address. Um, but being it's in Turbo Warp and this is like a genuine tool, I think it should most likely be safe. If you don't, then just try to find a way to set up your own server. Again, if you want, you can check out the documentation by hitting open documentation. Okay, anyways. Um, now that we have connection to our server, we can actually start sending some data. So I'm going to create a variable, and we're going to make this variable for all sprites, and do not check cloud variable. If you just checked cloud variable, that would not give it the same effect, because then again, technically you can do what we're going to be making with cloud variables. Um, but we're going to make a new variable, and I'm going to call this data. Okay, so I'm going to okay. And I'm going to actually make this in the center of the screen. I want to make this a uh, large readout, so it's just the number. You know, our ice cream cone looks really boring, so I'm going to make a little smiley face. Okay, let's got a little guy there. Um, okay, so this guy will just basically be reporting our errors. You can just leave the ice cream cone and just ice cream cone buzzy. <laughs> okay, so anyways, basically, now that we are connected, we actually want to start running some code. So I'm going to actually make a... Um, uh, a thing that gets ran when I receive a message. I'm gonna create a new message called send data. So when I receive the broadcast or message send data, we're gonna send the data. So basically when I receive send data, we're going to ask the user, what do you want to send? And then what we're gonna do is go into CloudLink and find the send block like so or you can search send and it will say something like send apple but that's just because it has an input value of send apple by default um but it should just say send so basically send apple so we don't actually want to send apple we want to send our answer like so so basically well, hey what do you want to send and then we'll send that data now make sure you add a delay whenever you send data so if you ever have a forever example if you're forever send data make sure you have some kind of delay you can either do like 0 0.1 0 0.05 
whatever just do not have it forever looping this will like crash your client or crash your server just make sure you don't do that that could yeah, cause problems for everyone just yeah just don't do that just be safe add a delay um wait zero seconds will make it wait a frame i don't think that'll do any good i think it'll still cause problems just at least wait like 0 0.05 0 0.1 something wait some kind of delay that will obviously make your game not super fast and sending stuff but it's again for safety precautions don't want to crash your server or your game so add some kind of delay so i'm just going to go control and i'm going to force our purveyor to wait at least 0 0.1 seconds so it's a small enough increment we're not going to notice sending data um so yeah anyways so we're going to send this data and this send data will basically send it to anybody who's connected to this server so then um yeah we can basically send data to our server which is sweet and it's that simple in scratch you have to create a cloud variable which you can only have 10 of in turbo warp you have infinite um you can't send in text because they're worried about people making chats which i guess is kind of understandable for scratch but again if you're making a genuine game you don't really need to worry about the chat system um but you can send a text don't have to convert it into some number thing and you can send numbers as well you can send everything it's so much better than scratch the system okay next we want to check if um any data was set so basically there's a block called when i receive and it's gonna say when i receive new global data packet a packet is just again a bunch of data that gets sent there's a bunch of types, private data, direct data, status code, global variables, private variables. Um, let's not get into variables or anything. Uh, direct data is most likely going to be data that another user sends directly to you because there is a user thing. You can set up usernames and everything. So you can send data directly to somebody connected in the server, but we're not going to be doing that right now. Um, we just need global data. Being that it's super simple, whoever connects to this will be able to see this data thing here. Super simple. So basically, when I receive new global data packet, we're going to actually want to set the data variable equal to global data. And that's literally it. That's how you make a system where somebody can send, type in some data. It'll set your data up here. Boom. That's as simple as it is. So much easier than Scratch. Um, if you want to go through this on Scratch, you'd have to make a cloud variable. You'd have to set up connecting to the cloud variable, most likely. I don't know. I guess you don't need to connect to cloud variable, but still, you need to set up the cloud variable, make the cloud variable, make it so when you type stuff, we need to convert that uh, our text into numbers, send it to the people in the cloud variable, turn it into text, and then set another variable to it. Where it's there, we connect to the server, and then set it to the data we sent. So if you want to test this, just come over here. Um, actually, let's make sure though, instead of a connect thing, once we actually connect, we actually broadcast the message send data and then we also want to go when i receive new data broadcast and we actually want to broadcast send data again so basically we'll keep looping ourselves to send data or actually we can just do that in this inside of when i receive send data so we'll just keep looping the send data things so we can always send data with the delay though so we don't crash the server so if you want to see this actually work you can come over to file and go package project and come down and then just hit package project and then bam and then Okay, all you have to do is pull up your files. You can't see my files right now. Um, but once you do, you just run that and you should have the project. So I'm going to pause it and run this. Okay, so I packaged both of them up. And as you can see, they're both running. They're both asking me what I wanted to send for data. So I'm going to hop on this first client here. And I'm going to actually type in something like, hello. Let's play hello. What's up? And you can see it pops up on both clients. Which is sweet. I can corner the second client and talk. Or say like not much. And boom, updates. I type like subscribe to the crazy dev. And boom, updates. So it's amazing. It's super cool and it's super easy. And yeah, I can already think of methods to make lobbies and rooms so people can make different again lobbies and rooms. You can connect to servers. And we can make multiplayer games with, like, you can make Zoms, Royale, if you ever play that, or whatever. Tons of games you make, and it's absolutely awesome. Anyways, that's really it. Super simple. Not that hard to set up. If you um, can, there's quite a bit here, but if you just read some documentation, it's not that hard. 
um so yeah if you guys want i can make more videos on this subject i'll be completely down this is something i find very interesting very fun to code and um, if you guys want a whole series of making like a overhead shooter game with lobbies and a full thing let me know down below I'll totally make that Anyways, if you guys want to support me, please consider subscribing or at least liking. If you guys like, it will help put this video out to more people. And then more people can start learning about Turbo Warp and stop using Scratch. So they can start using Turbo Warp and actually basically games to places. Unless you guys want to keep using Scratch, I don't know. Whatever. Anyways, um, that's all for me guys and I'll see you guys next time.